For more information on tutoring, personalized video solutions, or how to support MOOF University and the production of more videos, check out MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, so previously we talked about how we removed the ammonium ion or the uh, amino group from amino acid number one to give alpha keto acid number one via transamination. What happened specifically to that NH4 plus? It was added to alpha ketoglutarate to give glutamate. Okay, so what? Who cares? Why does this matter? Well, this happens with a bunch of amino acid number ones, right? And we're taking that that NH4 plus and adding it to alpha ketoglutarate to give glutamate continually. And so what happens is that the NH4 plus, um, oops, the NH4 plus collects on glutamate. Collects on glutamate. And so we got a bunch of it. If this keeps happening, if we're continually trying to get amino acids ready to be oxidized, uh, we're going to get a bunch of that NH4 plus on glutamate. And uh, basically, that we're collecting a, a bunch of NH4 plus. And NH4 plus, I didn't want to write it in white, let's write it in blue. It must be excreted because it is toxic. Okay, now that is unless we're talking about using it to make nitrogen containing compounds, which is not what we're doing here. We're not talking about that. Okay, we're talking about it building up on glutamate. Okay, so what happens? We got to get end up getting rid of this uh, NH4 plus. So what's going to happen is that the glutamate they, that is in the cytosol of a cell will go into the mitochondrial matrix of the uh, liver. And so we got this glutamate here. And what we're going to do is we're going to have an oxidative deamination. So we're going to oxidize glutamate and remove its amino group. Okay, so we're going to add water here. And we're going to remove NH4 plus and we're going to turn glutamate into alpha ketoglutarate. Okay, now this oxidative process requires specifically a um, an oxidizing agent. And that is either going to be NAD plus or NADP plus, right? If it's NAD plus, that becomes NADH. If it's NADP plus, it becomes NADPH. And this is, of course, catalyzed by glutamate dehydrogenase. Okay. Dehydrogenase, cat dehydrogenase is catalyzed redox reactions. And so when this, um, so the products really of this reaction, at least in this direction, because this, re this enzyme can catalyze the, uh, the reaction in the other direction for reductive amination. Uh, which I think I mentioned previously in a much older video, um, the products of this reaction going in the oxidative deamination direction, right, pr produces, uh, we produce NH4 plus and alpha ketoglutarate. That NH4 plus, is of course, we're, we're trying to excrete it safely. And so that'll go through the urea cycle to be excreted safely as urea. Okay. And the alpha ketoglutarate, since we're talking about this in the context of um, amino acid metabolism, it can go to the TCA cycle where it can be oxidized to give two NADHs, one FADH2, and one GTP. Or it can be um, turned into oxaloacetate. And um, basically that oxaloacetate can make it, out, make it from the matrix out into the cytosol for gluconeogenesis. So that can happen as well for gluconeogenesis, which I'll just write or abbreviate GNG. Okay. Now, this enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase is allosterically regulated. It is activated by ADP, ADP, and inhibited by GTP. Now, the reasons for this. I don't think have been sort of uh, completely figured out quite yet. And I put little asterisks here on these guys to kind of indicate that this is, as far as my explanation of it, it's purely my thoughts and not, it's not really my thoughts about why this happens. It's just about what I use to kind of remember the allosteric regulation. So I think about this happening in the context of amino acid catabolism, breaking down amino acids for energy. So the, the, the reasoning here is, is assuming that we're going to take that t, the alpha ketoglutarate to the TCA cycle and completely oxidize it for that energy. Okay. Now, if that's the case, why would this thing be stimulated by ADP? 
Well, ADP is typically an indicator of a low energy state. So if it's an indicator of a low energy state and it's uh, it's stimulating this, then that, that means we're trying to um, make, uh, make alpha ketoglutarate to send it to the TCA cycle so that we can get more energy out of it, right? Because we're in a low energy state, according to this guy. That's kind of how I think about it. That's oh, at least that's what I use to kind of remember this uh, this regulator. Now it's inhibited by GTP, and GTP is an indicator of high energy, which means we don't need to make alpha ketoglutarate, right? Um, don't make alpha ketoglutarate. And so there, it's not going to go to the TCA cycle and not going to give you these uh, NADHs, FADHs, 2s, GTPs. And so there's no increase in energy, right? Now, this doesn't entirely work um, uh, for the explanation because that alpha ketoglutarate could go to um, end up producing oxaloacetate, which can go out to produce uh, you know, glucose via gluconeogenesis. But I don't think about it that way. Just I just use what I just said to kind of remember this. Right? And I remember this forward reaction as written to help me remember the regulators. So it's not an all sort of, it's not an entirely correct way to think about it, but it gets the job done in terms of remembering these regulators for this enzyme. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for glutamate dehydrogenase. Now, there's a question down here of what if the NH4 plus is freed up in cells from tissues other than the liver? Right, because this is happening in the liver here. Uh, what if that happens in cells outside the liver? That's what we're going to talk about in the next video. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share with friends. Thank you and happy studying.